will not only inspire you, or not also inspire you, but also help you to make up your mind that you want to serve God either more or commit yourself to God. We're in the service this morning, scripture to praise God and to praise Him to worship. That's, that's what we're here. And we're here to get out of this service this morning, what we put in. So I'm going to ask you to revel us down. Sister Karen will open this service with a song. I can't help what others do. I want you to please to remain standing after this opening song for Sister Natasha to lead us to the throne of grace. Please remain standing after the opening song, Sister Karen. whatever it is that we plan to do, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. 
Lord, thank you this morning for placing the desire in our hearts to be in your house of worship. Yeah. We've gone through the whole week, Heavenly Father, and we're so thankful that you allowed us to come here to worship you, dear Lord, and to praise your holy name, Heavenly yeah. Father. Even those that may be on their bed of affliction, dear Lord, and may not be able to be here physically with us, but they're tuning in online, dear Lord, we thank you for them as well, Heavenly Father. Lord, we have so many requests that have gone forth, dear Lord. But we're so thankful, Heavenly Father, that we can cast all our cares upon you, dear Lord, because we know, Heavenly Father, that you care it for each and every one of us, dear Lord. Lord, too numerous for me to mention, Heavenly Father, but we're so thankful that your ears are open to the cries of your people, dear Lord, and your eyes are upon us, dear Lord, because we know that you, Lord, sit on the circle of the earth, Heavenly Father. Lord, so many are mourning this morning, dear Lord, the loss of their loved ones. We thank you so much for Sister Shella, Sister Jan, Sister Yolanda that's here in our presence this morning, dear Lord. Lord, no one knows what's going through them this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, we can call, we can text, we can hug them, dear Lord, but we know that there is no one that can comfort them that, like you can, Heavenly Father. So we pray, dear Lord, that you would just wrap your arms of yes. love around yes. them this morning, especially Sister Yolanda, dear yes, Lord. Lord. Help her to feel your presence, dear Lord, and to know, dear Lord, that we don't mourn as those that have no hope, Heavenly Father, because we believe and we know the life that Brother Fair live and that he's with you, Heavenly Father. So help her to continue to live, dear Lord, that she may see you one day as well, Heavenly Father, as you continue to comfort her. Remember, dear Lord, or dear Sister Cindy this morning, Heavenly yes. Father. Lord, we know that nothing is too hard for you and that nothing is impossible with you. Your word tells us, dear Lord, before we call, you would answer, dear Lord, and while we're speaking, my God, you would hear. So we pray this morning, dear Lord, that you would go to her bedside, dear Lord. Encourage, dear Lord, and uplift her, Heavenly Father. Help her to know, dear Lord, that you are still in the healing business and that you can heal her and raise her up according to your own will, dear Lord. So we pray for her this morning, dear Lord, that you would just wrap your arms of love around her and help her to feel your Holy Spirit near to her this morning, dear Lord. Remember Brother Shaw as well, Sister Rhonda, dear Lord, and all of those around her, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to strengthen them, my God. Lord, remember this present service, Heavenly Father, and the speaker of the hour, dear Lord. We know, Heavenly Father, that your word will not return unto you void, but it will go out and it will do what you accomplish. So, Lord, we pray this morning for every heart that's under the sound of your messenger's voice, that as your word go forth, Heavenly Father, it will be as a two-edged sword, dear Lord, piercing the soul and the spirit, dear Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that someone today may seek to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, as we look around and we see what's happening in the world, close to us and even in our own communities, dear Lord, we realize that we need a Savior, Heavenly Father. We realize that we need you, Lord, more today than we did yesterday. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that you may open the hearts of your people today, Heavenly Father, that your word may find lodgment in some heart, dear Lord, and we pray that everything, dear Lord, that will be said and done will be done to your praise, to your honor, and to your glory. As we continue in the service, dear Lord, we tell you thanks for coming in, for being with us, dear Lord. And we rebuke every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Let him have no part or no portion in this service, dear Lord. That your spirit may have liberty, that it may go forward and do what you will have it yes. to do there, Lord. Lord, we glorify you, we praise you, and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning is found in the back of our hymnal, page 475, and it's response to reading number 53, to Christian warfare. Brother James Miles will lead us, and he'll also be on the screen. Morning, church. Um, before I read, I want to say um, that this is the time for every Christian to put on the whole armor. Yes. Yes. And if you're not a Christian and you have no armor at all, it is time that you make a choice. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto in with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. A few people have come in since we got started. Miss Pat, happy, happy to have you with us. Mr. Katha, happy to have you and Jordan with us this morning. Mr. Larry, you and your wife and the whole family, we're happy to have you with us this morning in our presence. We hope that something will be said this morning will bless you and your family, sir. Um, we'll sit and sing number 270 from the church hymnal, Amazing Grace. Sister Karen.
Lord. That was good singing, church. I'm sure the angel in heaven is rejoicing with us. Our announcements are as follow are as follows. We have a special service planned for tonight. And no, it's not myself or Brother Dwayne, nor Brother James. Come out to hear who it will be. Please, we start coursing at 6.45 and the service begins at 7. This coming Wednesday is our, prayers, our praise and prayer service. Come to be with us in that service also next Saturday at 5.30 is our scheduled prayer meeting. And next Sunday, back to regular scheduled services. If there's any other special announcements, Pastor will make those when he come to the podium. The Universal Gospel Singers will sing for us at this time. Before we sing, I just want to say that I'm, I too am so happy to see Sister Yolanda and Paulette and her husband, and Sister Jan and Sister Shelda. And there's other people here too that had a loss recently that's hurting. As I look out in the congregation, I see a lot of people crying. And I didn't know that they were going to be here today, but God knew. And when we were thinking about the song, this song has been on my heart for so long. And I want you to listen to the words of it because we're going to dedicate it to you this morning. There's a lot of people hurting. A lot of people are sick and all been diagnosed. And Sister Vita's here, mm -hmm. and she had a death recently. I know today is Sister Babs' mom's birthday. There's all different kinds of things that make our hearts hurt and make our hearts heavy. So I dedicate this song to every one of us here today because everyone has something we're going through. Everyone. And I trust you will listen to the words and it will bless your heart this morning. Amen. Mm. Okay, no. E flat? Yeah. E flat, brother. Yeah. I don't understand the reason for this trial. Heavy burdens, this dark valley. Oh 
Lord, without you. Just sing the chorus. All I know is I can make it, Lord, without you. I'll be honest. I don't. Sorry, I missed you all. I see you there now. God bless you all. There is no substitute for the Holy Spirit. None at all. Praise the Lord for his presence with us this morning. I want you all to welcome. Our pastors, I welcome him up to bring us the word of God. I told him yesterday that he has encouraged this church for so many years and is still encouraging us. Keep Brother James in your prayers, please, that the Lord will keep him strong. We need him. We need him to keep guiding us, this congregation. He's done a wonderful job. Praise the Lord for Brother James. Brother James, may the Lord continue to bless you, sir, as you continue to guide us. I'm very thankful to be back in the service this morning and to see every one of you that are here. I trust you all are doing well in body and soul and striving with all your might to go on. I started a service here on Wednesday night. I spoke about something here on Wednesday night. If you were here, that I trust I'll be able to continue for a few minutes tonight, or today. I spoke about a man that encountered numerous unbelievable obstacles in his Christian path. And he was able to say, I endure all things for the elect's sake. If you remember, we na I named all of those things out, listed in the Bible, that he spoke of himself. His name was Paul. I'm going to read one scripture from his writings again this morning where he, he, he made us know that the Christian journey is a whole call. I've been trying for the last recent times to impress upon the congregation here the value that we need to have of between our, 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 our relationship with God and ourselves. It's a valuable thing. And if the world ever needed God, it needs him now. And I can't take a heart that's broken and make it over again. But I know a man yes. who can. Yes, sir. And 
someone by the name of Mary Pickford wrote, and I quote, if you have made mistakes, even serious ones, there is always another chance for you. What we call failure is not the falling down, but staying down. The end of quote. I will read from Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter 1, and one verse taken from chapter 26 of Matthew. Second Timothy, chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. This is very close to because it's a little bit longer text than I usually read, but I want to do the whole thing. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have rem remembrance of thee in my prayers day and night. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I, I may be filled with joy. Understand this? He's writing to a young man, Timothy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, um, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And from Matthew 26 and verse 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when we consider the world around us, we should be the happiest people in the world. Not boastful, but continually thanking God for his mercies and love to us. Every morning I wake, I wake very early, I don't sleep much. I thank God for watching over me during the night that has passed and gone and thanking him for another day that has not yet been lived and I ask him to help me to make it count for him. Make it count for the Lord. The neighbors need to see God. The community needs to see God. The islands need to see God. Something besides what's going on here. Yes. The world, God gave man the best. Yes. But how many are pursuing that today? Even Adam and Eve, that God placed in the garden and disobeyed him and lost their holy state and plunged the world into sin. Even when uh, during the cool of the day, in the leaves under the trees, God pursued Adam Amen. and said to Adam, where art thou? Yes, what a question. Where art thou? Oh, yes. We continually hear about com corruption. We hear about schemes. We hear about scams. Right. We hear about our, all the time conflict of all kinds, sometimes you see it. Dishonesty, destructive drugs, wickedness, um, an absolute disregard for righteousness. 
on the part of many. You see what I mean? I said that to say this. How much value are Christians placing on their relationship with God? Do you see it? Do you see what you have? Let me tell you something, friends. I, I, I'm not forceful enough, I suppose, to get it across. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Yes, the Bible also says um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, correction and instruction that the man of God may be perfect. God wants us to be at our best. To be at our best for him. Let, it, let the world see the best that we can give him. Amen. That's the only way it really successful. And the real, only real way it casts any kind of an impression. Do our best. That's right. There are many people in the world today, I, I don't exactly remember now what figures I reached. Eight billion or what it is. Last I heard it was seven. Eight billion or so. That's plenty of people. And there are many people in the world today with abilities and talents. The old people used to say, make your hair crawl to see them performing. Yes. Look at artists. They can take a brush hmm? and sit down in front of them and paint a picture. Let me tell you, it is amazing what this little man can do that God made. It is amazing. There are musicians that can play all kinds of instruments. Yes, all kinds of instruments. The sweetest music in the world. You see, this goes both ways. You can play other kind too. I'm talking about good music. I'm talking about good music. You got singers. So easy for them to sing. Seemingly, that's their gift. People call it a gift. Well, even teachers. Some seem to be born to do that. So important position. Some people say teachers are gifted. You have playwrights and writers who can sit down and write amazing volumes of books that attract the attention of people to read. Yes, well, <coughs> what I'm talking about this morning is a holy calling. Hmm? The Bible speaks of gifts of the Spirit that are bestowed on Christians. The gift of healings, the gift of ministry, the gift of faith. I didn't get it before me to read. All those different gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit and all those things. Some people are gifted to do other things that people don't do. Yes. The Bible calls the Christian calling a holy calling. Whether you have any special gift or not, it's a holy calling. What does holy mean? Living according to a strict or highly moral, religious, or spiritual system, or saintly. I am telling you, I'm, I am moved to see what I'm seeing in our world. Yours too. We all live here. We all live in the same world. How better a world it would be if people listened to God and what God has to say in his wonderful word. What a different place it would be. And Frank wrote, and I quote, How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Right. Huh? When you take your stand for righteousness, 
remain standing. Today's mighty oak is yesterday's little nut that held Amen. its ground. Amen. And David J. Mahoney wrote, and I quote, the person who stands out in the crowd demonstrates that he has his own set of values mm -hmm. and has a strong sense of self-worth. Self While the winds of conflicting ideas blow some people away and the tides of various fads wash others away, he will stand firm. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high the royal banner. It must not suffer loss. In other words, it's an honor to be accepted by God, to be a representative of his. The gift of salvation into the world. Oh, it seems to me like so many people are losing out their vision of what God's service is yeah. and, uh, and, and what salvation of Christianity is. And I, I promote it everywhere I go. And I try to tell people as much as I can. It's a wonderful way to live. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's a clean way to live. Yeah. I was telling the Sun School class there a few minutes ago. It's a wonderful life. That was an extensive, comprehensive lesson about the sons of God. Long lesson, but it was well written. So what the passage of scripture is saying in Timothy, Paul always remembered his brethren. Always remembered his brethren and co-workers in the faith. If you read these epistles, you will find that out. He opens them with special greetings. Some of them were written to two. Instead of one, to two people. Instead of one and all that. Wonderful epistles, wonderful letters. He found joy and gratitude in a prison cell. While he thought about a mother and a grandmother who had helped to instill into the, the son and, their son and grandson spiritual instruction. Went through Paul's mind and thought about it. I just read it here. I'm not going to read it all. When I call to remembrance where you got your faith from. Right. Your, your, um, the unfeigned faith that is in thee. Which first dwelt in thy grandmother. And, a, and your mother. And I am persuaded that it is in you also. This was a young man, you know. Yes. That he was writing to. Teenager. Young, young evangelist. But Paul called him his son in the faith. You see, they helped him. They helped Timothy. But he had to keep the fire burning in his own soul for what God gave him. Come on, church. I keep saying all the time, this is ours. This is ours. This is ours. People can help us. People can talk to us. We can listen to preaching, read the Bible, all that. But we have the ultimate um, responsibility of keeping ourselves in the right path. In the right path. Oh, yes. What a wonderful thing it is to have the grace of God in your heart. Hmm? Yeah. The grace of God in your heart. Coleman Cox said, and I wrote, and I write, I read, even the woodpecker owes his success to the fact that he uses his head and keeps on pecking away until he finishes the job. Yes. Samuel Johnson said, and I quote, great works are not performed, not by strength alone, by per but by perseverance. I preached a message to him many, many, many years ago called Slow. 
but moving. You remember that? Hmm? You remember that? Keep on moving. There are, there are oil pumps in the United States. I used to see them all the time when I went there. Out in the field. Big old, big old things. They're just going. Just, just like how you see my hand going. But they're pumping. They're pumping. They're pumping all the time. They don't stop. Come on, church. Don't stop. Don't slow down. Keep energetic. Keep your, your bones souple up, and physically speaking, and spiritually speaking too. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> no shame or hesitation should hamper him. He was telling him, the young man, not even what they were doing to Paul. You know, some things can discourage us. Yes, sir. I've seen some, some things during my 40 odd years here that could have discouraged me. Everybody has. But I, Brother Dwayne said something here yesterday in the prayer meeting. I hope everybody heard it. It was just a handful here. But I heard it. No one or nothing is going to deprive us of our walk with God. Huh? By the grace of God. Amen. You heard what we sang there a while ago? I don't care. Well, we should say, don't say we don't care. But we should say, it doesn't matter what others do. Because we should care. It doesn't matter what others do, I'm going on. It doesn't matter what others say, I'm going on. It doesn't matter what others say, I'm going on. And um, it's, um, if I can find this one, I'll leave this one. I won't read no more. I don't see it, but um, it says uh, 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 gossip without any ground will get around some other way. Without anything to stand on, we'll get around some other way. Yes, it'll get around some other way. I tell you, the, the society is plagued with shoo shooing. Excuse me, man. Think about some of the things spiritual sometimes. Huh? Something spiritual sometimes. Anyhow, God's saving and calling of a Christian is not of works. It just said, Bible said here, one cannot earn their way into heaven. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. You see how merciful this God is? You ever ask the Lord to help to make, to make that day profitable? And to make it count for him? One little word or something to somebody. Uh, some little half a penny or a dollar. Make somebody day. Give it to him. Make somebody day. Salvation is according to God's own purpose. Grace is God's unearned favor, not because of anything that we have done. And verse 12 expresses Paul's unshakable trust in the God who called him. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Now, I read another scripture, the words of Jesus. Uh, this took place during the, the um, encounter with, with Peter. 
and then nearing down to Gethsemane when Peter swore he wouldn't deny him. Hmm? Some people got a, a, a belief that they're, you know. Huh? I've been saying to this church from the time I've been here, never say what you won't do. Ask oh, God to help you. That's a strong statement. That's a strong statement. Yes, Jesus' words to Peter about denying him, his verse 34 says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. How did I made him feel? I wonder how Peter felt. He must have felt boastful and big when he said that about, I will never deny you. Huh? Yeah. Man, now this is Jesus. This is Jesus, you know. This is Jesus, the one his followers. Yes. And then we find his praying in, in Gethsemane in verse 36. Then Jesus came, then Jesus, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. I'm going to tell you something this morning, friends. What we're doing here is for ourselves. Yes. As well as you would love other people to follow you. Yes. And see what you're doing and win them. But this is ours to work out. Yes. While I go and pray yonder. His heart being heavy, he asked them to watch with him. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tar ye here and watch with me. Yes, that's what he said. Returning to the disciples, he found them sleeping. And he asked them, what could you not watch with me one hour? And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, could you not watch with me one hour? Do you love the Lord? Hmm? You know, we shouldn't forget that we're Christians when we go and do in, 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 in the supermarket or anything like that. You know? We're still Christians. If you go to a restaurant and don't eat, you're still a Christian. You must let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. Yes. Then what he told them, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And that's a, lot, that's a big word. For the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. I've seen so many come and start with God and go. Didn't finish. Let me tell you something, friends. There is no lack in this God that we serve or you serve. There is no lack in God. The lack is in us. And people neglect themselves in, in a spiritual sense and go down and go down and go down till they lost it. Your fault. So what does it mean to watch? To keep a watchful eye. That's one of the meanings. Big, big word. Long definition in the dictionary. To keep watchful, a watchful eye on. We have to watch ourselves. Huh? We have to watch ourselves. Our own spiritual well-being. Sometimes you got to stop and ask yourself, am I okay? Am I okay? Am I doing the right thing? Am I really living up to what the Lord wants me to live up to? Eh? You got to catch yourself. Catch a hold of yourself. Sometimes I answer the phone in the, in the car now. I'm guilty of it. 
It's bad, but sometimes it rains and I answer it. Just hoping the police don't catch me. But I wouldn't want that to happen. Because they're wrong. It's against the law. But what's the way I do it? I, I promise myself every time not to do it again. We got to watch that we don't present the wrong influence to people. Huh? Influence work both ways. This man I wrote about here still influencing us. You know why? He held it and, and, uh, and held it and died in the faith. He refused to give in to the obstacles and the, 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 the snares of the devil that tried to trip him up. And he went on. He said when he run, one time, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Yes. We have to watch our attitude toward others. Yes, oh, yes. Help us, Lord. You know something? Yeah. This, this is a beautiful life. It keeps you conscious of what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do something you shouldn't do, you know it. Right. We know, who knows better than us? Yes. You got to watch our attitude yes. toward our Christian life, toward the church. Amen. Oh, that was quiet. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. He told them to stay alert. They were to be tested too. Now they were, he, he re reminded them of the weakness of the flesh. And sometimes people blame that on too much too. Yeah, you, know, you gotta conquer the flesh. Yeah. Paul said, I keep my butt on them. Lest after I preach the gospel, I be a castaway. You ready there? Yeah. Oh. And then of course he started with. We have to watch and pray. Yes. It prevents, it prevents temptation according to this. Huh? Yes. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What a wonderful word. The word of God. It is, it is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction. Just a couple of others, I believe. That the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And in reading the scripture on Wednesday night that I spoke here, I also read this scripture. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. I keep saying here all the time, my beloved friends, we don't know what we got. We don't know what we got. Other people know sometime before us. And can tell us. Yes, you remember the man. The man that I, I spoke about here some time ago. The little story. About the man that had this farm. And decided to sell it. And um, told the, the agent to put it in the newspaper. And all these things that he looking for. And when the paper came out, he looked at it. But I have all that already. He told him, take it out. And I'll sell it again. Amen. Think about what you have. Yes. Cherish it. Yes. Take care of it. Yes. Abide in Christ and he will abide in you. Yes. Under his wings we are safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempest are wild. Still I can trust him. I know. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me. And I am his child. 
I also quoted these words. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, that was taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded our helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, this is verse 3, my sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. Amen. And I bear it no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. And the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. And the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well. It is well. With my soul. We're going to sing a closing hymn. Number 333. Anybody need some help? We had an altar call him before the service. Got on the way, far on the way, but we can have it again. Under his wings, let us stand. Under his wings, I am safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, is there another one here? Oh, what abiding. Though the night deepens, still I can trust him. He has, he has redeemed me and I am his child. Under his wings, is there someone here needs to help this morning? Under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, Forever under his wings, under his wings, oh, what in sorrow, how the heart yawningly he turns to his rest. Often when earth has no balm for my healing, there I find comfort, and there I am blessed. Under His wings, under His wings, who from His
day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his lips the one who saved me by his grace and he takes me by message pastor left with us that each one of us needs to do our part in order for us to hear well done the good and faithful servant we have to do our part Amen. May the Lord continue to bless us may the Lord continue to encourage us remember my announcements earlier please about the service tonight come back and be with us if we possibly can tonight brother do you need to come and dismiss the service for me please Our Father, we thank you so much uh, for the time we spent here this morning. We thank you especially for the encouraging message that has been an, an encouragement to our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for the audience, those that have come to be here. And we just ask, Lord, that you will continue to hover over them. And, Lord, as we dismiss from this place, watch over us, keep us safe from harm and danger, and give us the desire to be back again tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.